Uh, let's see, that's a little bit better. Okay, so I apologize. Um, I know that the video demonstrations of drawing that apple in stages, the quality, the resolution, it's pretty poor. Um, and you really can't see the line detail that I'm making. But you know what, that's okay, because ultimately it's not about my drawing, it's about your drawing. Um, but I just wanna point out a few things really quick before you do get started. Uh, it's all about observations. It's all about seeing and recognizing details. So before you begin your drawings, I want you to take your apple and really um, just observe it, look at it, notice these little details, the things that make it interesting. Um, you know, is it really a rounded shape or is it, you know, kind of high on one side and low on the other? You know, wide in the center and kind of narrow at the edges, the tops and the bottoms, right? Can you see the lines that are kind of creating the form of the apple in the skin? And do you see these lines that are kind of coming parallel to one another, extending from the center over the edges? You recognize these little dots. Do you see these little dots throughout it? Yeah. Do you see the lighter tones in one area and the darker tones? It's not a solid red. There's different uh, tones, there's different shades of those colors throughout the whole apple. It looks like it's darker up here and a little bit lighter down here, but really light over here, especially where I see uh, highlights, right? Where the light's reflecting, you know? What are you, doing, what are you gonna do for drawing that? How would you create uh, a highlight or shadow with just using lines? because we don't want to be shading our apple right now. We're just using the lines that we used in our previous experimentations to, to kind of recreate what we see. Also, what position are you going to draw your apple in? That's really important. Are you going to do it straight on? Are you going to do it slightly at an angle so you can see some of that top part, which I think is kind of interesting? You can see how those lines are all converging inward to kind of that central area. Are you going to do it looking down on top of it? That's different. I don't know who, I've never seen that done before, but that's something different. But when we look at it at this angle, the whole, all that visual information changes. The details all change, and we get a completely different set of information. So it's really important, before you begin, just to take some time to observe, look at, and think about how are you going to draw that apple, and what information can you really pull out. The more visual information that you can pull out from your observations, the more detailed your drawing is going to be, the more interesting your drawing is going to be. Remember, if you can see it, you can draw it. That's what you know, it's all about. Drawing is the art of seeing. So when you begin your drawing, the first thing I want you to kind of do is visualize how is that going to sit on your paper, right? We're going to try and do our drawings about in equal proportion, one to one. Unless your apple is really big and you can't fit all three stages on that one piece of paper, then you might want to draw a little bit smaller. And I can't imagine anybody has an apple that's so small that you know, you're going to want to draw it much larger than it really is. But if you do have a really small apple for whatever reason, you might want to increase the size of your drawing a little bit. But we want to have three drawings on our paper. One, two, three. So think about that layout. Think about that composition, how those three drawings are going to sit on our paper. We don't want all three drawings all in our top right-hand corner, right? We don't want them all on one side of the paper. That looks really weird. We want them kind of distributed. We want them laid out in a way that makes our paper interesting to look at. So we don't want them too small, you know, one apple, two apple, three apple. Or we don't want them so big, one apple, two apple, and then we don't have space for a third apple, right? So the first thing we're gonna do after we make our observations is we're gonna think about how that's gonna sit on our paper. And what I like to do is draw a boundary box. So I'm just gonna look at my apple and think about the size of it, and I'm gonna draw a little box something like that, right? maybe a little bit wider. And the idea here is that my apple drawing will fit in that box. I'm going a little bit quick right now because I'm just kind of giving you an idea of how to get started. It's gonna fit in that box and it's gonna to touch all four sides, right? Something like that. 
Now, if that's my first apple, my first stage, then the second one, maybe it'll come down here somewhere, right? And then the third one over here, right? And that's not a bad plot, right? So we would have one drawing, two, and then three, right? So if you think about it that way before you begin, you'll eliminate the chances of running out of space or having a real awkward drawing where everything's off on one side or our apple not really being in proportion. Use those little boxes for each stage. You don't have to do it all at the same time, but as you begin each drawing, draw out the size of your apple roughly. Look at it, think about what are the proportions? What's the shape of it if you were to draw a geometrical shape around that apple? How would it fit? And then do that on the paper. Okay, and that'll help you keep it in proportion. So let's go ahead and start with that, you guys, and then um, just have some fun with this, all right? This is really about using line and making good observations and enjoying your apple. All right.